Hmm. So now we're back to the beginning of the season. Where I'm just going to get an injury every single day, right? Again, I don't like starting videos like this. I don't. This is not some this is not how I want to start my video by staring at the screen because some, one of my players gets injured for the 100th straight game or ejected or whatever other nonsense. I had 27 injuries in NFL today too. One slate, All right? We're, we're, we're back to that. One slate. Ah, oh, frustrating, frustrating, but... All right, guys, let's talk about this five-game NBA DFS slate. If you guys are looking for more in-depth content, go check my Patreon link down below. I'll offer a lot of different packages, prize picks. We're going for five for six every single night. Tonight, we'll see uh, Denny got in massive foul trouble, which tilted me. Um, looking like three or five. Maybe it looks looking like a forgettable night in prize picks. First one in a while, but if I could have hit one of those 25Xs, that would have been in great shape. But I might, like I was talking about this in the Discord, I think I'm hitting at like 80, over 80% 80 rate this week on prize picks. And I think I'm going to be down one after today. So, woohoo! Um, but uh, yeah, guys, if you, if you are not familiar with prize picks, they are sponsor of the video. Make sure to use the code DKDFS for a 100% match up to $100. Uh, and um, again, you build two, three, four, five, up to six player props and one up to 25 extra money, or you're just like me and you consistently go five for six uh, and then have a couple down days and then you're down money overall. Woo! -hoo. All right. Well, let's start off with Sacramento and Philadelphia. On the Sacramento side, big news is De'Aaron Fox is questionable. He's missed back to back games. Uh, if he does not start, we kind of know what's going to happen here. David Mitchell would start. Um, he played 25 minutes last game. He's been really bad this year. Like he had some good games last year, but like in the few games that he has started, he has been really, really bad. Um, and then he's going to get more usage for the other starters. So Davion, like you go from De'Aaron Fox to De Davion Mitchell, like you're just going to have more usage for Sabonis, more usage for Herder, Bar like the other guys going to look better. Like Monk's going to look better off the bench. So just everyone on this team's going to look better. Now my worry here, Sabonis, is not usage or minutes. He's going to play a ton. It's can he stay out of foul trouble against Joel Embiid? And, like, my boy Sabonis, he's great offensively. He's going to get abused defensively by Joel Embiid. So that's my worry here with Sabonis. The mid-range guys, Herter, Barnes, they're both fine. I think I'd prefer Herter to Barnes, but these guys should play a ton. He can Murray at 4-6. I mean, he has seen a minutes uptick of late without Aaron Fox. He's playable value. If he continues to play over 30 minutes, like, that does intrigue me. Malik Monk at 5-1. Minutes haven't really been there for him, even with De'Aaron Fox out. But it's because he's been shooting really bad. He shot 3 of 15 last game. So, like, if he has a decent shooting game, I think you could get close to 30 minutes from Monk. So, like him for tournaments, if there's no Fox, I don't really think I can get to anyone else. Um, I mean, Matthew's been playing the backup 5. So, if you think Sabonis gets in foul trouble, you can take a dart on him. It's a little bit tough, though, because he's only center eligible. All right, let's move on to Philadelphia. So Philadelphia, still no maxi. Um, Daniel House questionable, but that's not big news. So Embiid and Harden, I mean, it's a great spot for them. Embiid's been playing very, very well of late. So I like both uh, the main guys for Philadelphia. I think the ceiling's a bit higher in Embiid right now. But yeah, both Harden and Embiid look good. Mid-range, I mean, kind of just indifferent on Tobias Harris, indifferent on De'Anthony Melton. Both these guys should play over 30 minutes in competitive game, but they're clear, you know, three and four options behind Harden and Embiid. Jake Milton going to come off the bench, probably play 20 plus minutes, but don't love the price point on him. Don't really know if I want to mess with the back of five situation here with Philly. PJ Tucker's going to play a ton, but I don't even think I can stomach playing 30 minutes of PJ Tucker on this slate. Golden State, Milwaukee. So Wiggins is still out. Draymond Green is probable. So you should get the starting lineup of Steph, Clay Poole, uh, Draymond, and Looney. I think Steph's a good tournament play at this price point. Um, not really an optimal play, but a guy that can go for, you know, 70 any single night. Uh, but yeah, definitely not optimal. Like him for tournaments. I think Clay and Poole look decent in the mid-range. They should play a ton. Uh, Clay Thompson has been shooting very, very well. But the day that I need him to uh, not shoot awful, he shoots 8 of 25 uh, and goes under by one point to screw me on $1,200. But no, we're, we're over that. I'm not tilted about that at all. No way. 
Um, yeah, Clay and Poole both look a bit better there without Wiggins. Draymond Green, if he stays out of foul trouble, should play a lot in this game. My worry is he's probably going to be matched up a lot with Giannis. So, like, there is worry with foul trouble here. Looney at 4-5, if he stays out of foul trouble, should play mid-20s minutes. He's a fine value. I mean, if you think either of the guys in the front court get in foul trouble, you can maybe take a shot in, like, Kaminga at 4-3, good point-per-minute guy that would see a minutes increase. Steven Chenzo, fine dart throw. But there's no one I feel really good about here on the bench. On the Milwaukee side, got to keep an eye on Drew Holiday's status. He's questionable. Just every one of my best ball team got injured. John Morant was out. Porzingis is injured. Now Drew Holiday. It's right back to where it was early in the year where literally every one of my best ball team is out. Um, but yeah, Drew Holiday's out. You know, Giannis and Middleton are going to look a li- little bit better. I think Middleton will look really good at 6K, assuming no limitations here. And then I would think that they start Javon Carter if Drew Holiday's out. Like, that's what we saw. Well, we saw Javon Carter just pick up starts earlier in the year. So um, I would think that he picks up the start. If he does, he's definitely a decent value at 3.3K. You'd probably see more minutes for guys like George Hill as well. But I don't know if I can stomach a George Hill even on this slate. Um, and then the secondary options will look a bit better too. Drew, Drew Holiday's out. Like Grayson Allen, like Pat Connaughton. The bigs might see a couple more minutes. Lopez and Portis. They're both playable if Drew's in. They're going to look probably just a little bit better just because I think they find their way into more minutes if Drew's out. Um, and then if Drew Holiday's in, I mean, I think the top three guys look good because I love targeting players against Golden State. And then, you know, everyone else kind of just secondary plays with the bigs, with Allen, with Connaughton. So, so we out of Phoenix and Houston. And this is the most mispriced team on the slate, and it's not even close. So... Uh, I don't know what DraftKings was thinking with these price points. One of the best possible matchups. You got no Devin Booker, no Cam Johnson still. Obviously, no Jay Crowder not playing for them this year. And the highest price player is 7.2K, DeAndre Ayton. You got Chris Paul at 6.2K against Houston with everyone out. So, I'll just say this. DeAndre Ayton, Chris Paul, Mikel Bridges, three of the best plays in the slate, and it's not close. Campaign will play a little bit alongside Chris Paul. He's fine in tournaments at 5 2. Corey Craig should play a ton, played 36 minutes last game. I think he looks pretty good for value. And then they started Dario Saric last game, played him 21 minutes. Questionable for him to start, but it was Damian Lee that saw the big minutes bump. He played 34 minutes. So Damian Lee, I think, is also one of the better values in the board at 3.5K. Moving on to Houston. So Houston, I think the top three guys look good in tournaments and KPJ, Green, and Sengun. I mean, all three of these guys, you know, the two guards should play mid-30s minutes if the game is competitive. Sengun's minutes have been a bit up and down, but the ceiling is there when they give this guy 30-plus minutes. And then the rest of the team, Jabari Smith, he's been playing a bit better of late. I think he feels a little bit too cheap, assuming he continues to play mid-30s minutes. Eric Gordon's always a playable value. Like, he's going to play around 30 minutes. Not going to be super productive, but the minutes will be there. If you want to take shots on guys like Eason or KJ Martin off the bench, you can in tournaments. Bruno Fernando will play the backup five. Again, I guess, but I don't think it's necessary to go there. New Orleans and Utah, so no Brandon Ingram still. Herbert Jones, probable. So, Zion Williamson at the top at 9-5. I mean, he's been playing extremely well of late. I have no issue if you want to play Zion. CJ McCollum is 6'9". He's been struggling besides last game. Look, it's a nice, uh, interesting buy low opportunity on CJ. In a competitive game, you should see mid-30s minutes for him. JV, I mean, he's always playable in GPP. His minutes are all over the place. But at 5'6", like if he plays mid-20s minutes, 25-plus minutes, he can have a really good game at the price point. With Herbert Jones back, um, you, you should get Trey Murphy still in the starting lineup, though, with Ingram. So I would guess they start Zion, CJ, JV, Murphy, and Herb Jones. Murphy at 5'5", might lose a few minutes, uh, still playable in the mid-range. Herbert Jones, assuming no limitations, I think is fine at 4'9", but he, with him back, it hurts Daniels, it hurts Najee Marshall, who's been playing um, a good amount of minutes and not a bad point per minute guy, but he should lose minutes. I mean, Alvarado's 4'2", his minutes are kind of all over the place. I guess you can take a shot on him for GPPs. I'll mention Larry Nance. Something has changed a little bit uh, of late. He's been playing a bit more alongside JV. So at 4.4K, I think he's a solid GPP play, but don't expect 40 plus. We've gotten 40 plus from him back to back slates. And like if he's going to be popular, then I'm fine fading. But if he's going to be relatively low owned, then I, I like going to Nance. On the Utah side, so no Sexton, but everyone else looks like they're available. So I would guess that they start Onley, Clarkson, one of Beasley or Vanderbilt, Markin and Olenek. 
So I only have 5'4". If there's no limit on him, I like the price point. But we'll keep an eye on news. Um, he played 25 minutes in his first game back and then rested the next game. Clarkson and Markkinen, the two guys that have the ceiling. Uh, I think I give the edge slightly to Markkinen over Clarkson. But both these guys should play mid-30s minutes, assuming the game stays competitive. Olenek at 5'9". I mean, he should play low-30s minutes. He's always fine in the mid-range. Beasley, if he starts, is playable in tournaments, kind of score independent. If he comes to the bench, he's a bit riskier. Vanderbilt, again, his minutes have kind of been all, a little bit up and down. I, I'm guessing we see probably mid-20s minutes. These value guys are priced up from when everyone was out. Now a lot of these guys are back, so I don't know if I can stomach like NAW, my boy, or THT. Uh, Kessler got shifted back to the bench as well. So let's finish it up here with Boston and the Lakers. Boston playing tonight right now against the Clippers. Um, I think the top two guys look decent in Tatum and Brown. Need their priorities, but I like the matchup quite a bit. Mid-range, Marcus Smart, pretty good play. Should play mid-30s minutes. Brogdon, White, they should play mid-20s minutes on the bench. I give the edge to Brogdon over White because he's just the better point from a guy of the two. Blake Griffin should start, should play low 20s minutes. I think is a solid value. You'll see Grant Williams play big minutes if he can stay out of foul trouble like him at 4-2. And that's about it. So basically, the Celtics, unless something changes tonight, look the same as they did tonight so um let's finish it up with the lakers anthony davis lebron james uh 80 i like in tournaments i mean bigs have done well against boston and he is playing really well they're just running all their offense through ad but lebron at a sub 10 point sub 10k price point also looks decent so like i like the top two guys here for the lakers i don't know if i can get to anyone else in the lakers westbrook six seven the minutes with both lebron and 80 healthy they, they're hovering at like mid 20s so i probably can't go there Value-wise, I mean, yeah, Lonnie Walker, playable at 4-5. Dennis Schroeder at 4-1, playable. Austin Reeves at 3-9, playable. Pat Beverly at 3-6, playable. Roy Brown Jr., 3-1, probably not playable. So, like, I would say this group of, like, Lonnie and Schroeder and Reeves and Beverly, all fine values. There's no standouts. Those guys are, like, last piece in plays, filler options. And then Bryant playing the backup five. I mean, he's probably only going to get um, whatever minutes Anthony Davis does not play. So, I mean, you can take a shot in him and, and hope that AD gets injured or something, which is definitely possible because AD always goes to the locker room. But um, not going to be the direction that I go on this five-game slate. So that's going to wrap up the video, guys. Hopefully tomorrow night doesn't end in crippling pain with another injury or an ejection. I would very much appreciate that. I uh, appreciate you guys for watching. Make sure, again, to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. See you guys in the next one.